Hi, my name is John, and I'd like to explain the value of setting up a new Google Classroom for each new marking period. Now, one of the things that I have observed uh, as I use Google Classroom is that over time, as there is more activity in the class, more comments, more assignments, uh, more revisions and feedback, it begins to load a little bit slower every time. And if you are adding a lot of content to Google Classroom because you're teaching blended or fully online, that's only going to become a bigger and bigger issue as you go through the school year. Another really big issue that teachers have brought up is the inability to lock old past assignments. So, you know, if you're moving into the second marking period, there's no way to lock or archive all of the assignments from the first marking period. And try as hard as you want, students will continue to turn things in, resubmit things, add comments to those old assignments that are now closed um, and locked for resubmission. The benefit of creating a new class for each quarter, semester, or trimester is that it eliminates these common issues. So I'm gonna show you the easy way to set up a new class for each marking period. The first thing I wanna do is go into my Google Classroom and take a look at my world history course. So this one is currently set up for the first quarter. We've got some announcements, we've got assignments, students have been turning things in, there's comments, we've got grades, um, and right now it's working great. But I know that if I do another quarter, and then possibly the third and the fourth quarter, over time, this is going to become very cumbersome. Um, it's hard to manage, There's just a lot of stuff in here. And so I'm going to create a new class for the second marking period. To begin, the first thing I'm gonna do is create that new fresh class. So I'm gonna go to the classroom home screen. I'm gonna click the plus button, and I'm just gonna create my new class. We'll call it the same thing, World History. 2020, and I'm going to add a reference in the class name to indicate that this is the Q2, second marking period. This is my first period class, so I'll add that section in as well, and I'll hit the Create button. Now, you might be wondering why I am not recommending to use the Copy Class feature of Google Classroom. So, uh, you know, you can, Google Classroom does have this uh, copy option. And it's a great feature when I'm making a copy of last year's class to use this year. But it is not helpful in this situation because I'm not interested in making copies of all of my first quarter assignments and, and things. I wanna start fresh. Unfortunately, when you make a copy of the class, it doesn't copy the actual settings of the class. Your gradebook settings, your guardian settings, Google Meet settings, your class banner, all of that is um, returned to the default state anyway. So starting from fresh is better and easier, in my opinion, than making a copy. Let's go ahead and open up that Q2 class. At this point, you'd wanna go through and continue setting it up, upload your class header. Um, you can go into the settings uh, for the class, You know, change your um, commenting and stream notifications, set up Google Meet, set up your gradebook. Basically, you're just going to mirror all the settings that you had in your first quarter class. So it'll take a few minutes, but um, you just have to do it one time and you're good to go. Step number two is to pull content from that Q1 class into the Q2 class. So I do have some resources in the first quarter section of the class that I want my students to continue to have access to. Fortunately, I don't have to recreate those. I'm gonna to go to the classwork page, I'm gonna hit the create button, select reuse post, and I'm going to pull in the content that I'm interested in making available to my students to the Q2 class. So I have uh, my syllabus in here, I'm gonna reuse that. It's gonna be the same links, uh, everything's gonna be the same. You'll notice it also pulls in the topic from the class as well. So all I have to do is hit the post button. So there's my syllabus with my class rules and policies. One more time, I'm also going to reuse my resources and links uh, post. This has some things that we use on a regular basis. So I'll pull that in as well. 
Now, when my students eventually join this class, they're barely even going to know the difference. It's going to look almost exactly identical to the Q1 class, um, except obviously there will be new assignments for the second uh, marking period. So you'll want to pull in any kind of resources and material posts um, that you might be interested in. Now, some of you may have a unique situation. You may have been in the middle of an assignment, so maybe this assignment spans the first and the second quarter, or perhaps you have some kind of an ongoing assignment that you do for the entire year. So I'm talking about things like uh, journals, word of the week, uh, interactive notebooks, things that you want your students to have access to for the duration of the school year. That's okay, we can fix that. So I do have a journal in my class, so every week my students write a journal entry and I want them to continue with that. I want them to have access to all their old stuff in addition to the new stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse that journal assignment. Uh, so here it is right here, it's my weekly journal. I'm gonna pull that in to the new class, but there's a little trick that we're going to uh, try out. It's going to pull in the original attachment. Now this is what my students started with. This is not going to be the one that has their writing from the past quarter. So I am actually going to remove this attachment. I'll go ahead and add the new topic. Uh, so we'll call this uh, week six. And I'm going to assign that as well. Now. In just a minute, we're gonna invite the students to this class and I'm going to show my students how to attach their existing journal assignment to that post that I just pulled back into the class. Let me reorganize this so that it's in the correct order. So we're gonna, we just finished week five, we'll be starting week six um, as we begin uh, the second quarter. Um, all right, now it is time, the third step is to invite your students to join this new class. Now there's many different ways that you can do this and you can pick whichever one um, is most convenient for you. I really do like the new ability to uh, just send my students a link uh, and they click that link and it joins the class. So you can use the class code if you want. We've been doing that since Google Classroom was uh, first launched. Uh, but I love this link um, and I'm going to actually post the link to the Q2 class in the quarter one class. So I just go to uh, my class settings. I'm gonna grab that link. Let's head back to the first period class. And it doesn't matter, assignment, announcement. I'll say join the Q2 class. And I'm just gonna add that link as an attachment. Good to go, okay. I'm gonna now take you into the student perspective so you can see what this process will be like for your students. It's very quick uh, and very easy. So let me switch to my student account. So currently, the student is only in the first quarter uh, edition of the class. When we open that class up, we'll see that uh, new announcement will be posted. There we go. And they simply need to click this link to accept the invitation to that uh, second quarter class. So I will do that. Now this will take a little bit of time. You gotta make sure that all of your students make the jump from the Q1 to the Q2 class. Uh, most of them should be able to do that with no issues. You'll always have a couple stragglers. You can always invite them manually. So uh, Peter, who is the student I'm logged in as right now, is now a member of the class. They go to the classwork page. And they can see the resources and links and the new journal assignment. Now I wanna finish up that journal assignment um, transfer. So remember this is an assignment I want them to work on for the entire school year. Um, and I'll have to probably verbally give them these instructions and walk them through it. So right now they can see the journal assignment, but there's no attachment. They need to reattach their journal presentation to this assignment placeholder that I've created. Very easy. Simply going to click the um, add or create button. All of the assignments from the quarter one class are in Google Drive. This is Peter's journal right there. And all I have to do is click insert and I'm done. So all of your students will reattach their journal. They continue working on it, adding new slides every time uh, you do a new um, assignment, a new uh, journal entry. And that's it, it's that easy. 
Now there's one final step that we need to complete once your students have all made the jump to your Q2 class. Um, they've finished you know, attaching everything and get everything working. The final step is to actually go and archive your quarter one class because we don't want students, these things look almost identical. You got the same banner, same settings, same content, much of it. So we want to make sure that students don't get confused and go back to the old class. So as a teacher, I'm going to go in uh, to my class home screen, click the little snowman, and I'm going to select the archive button. Now archiving doesn't delete anything, it just locks it down. So we can still get the assignments if we need to. You can always unarchive the course if you need to look at something. You can reuse content if you forgot to pull something in, but it won't be visible anymore for your students and they only see that Q2 uh, class. Couple final uh, points before we um, wrap this video up. A um, couple of cool things. First of all, the guardians follow the students. So if you have gone through the effort and trouble of entering parent emails, uh, so they can receive those guardian summaries. You do not need to do that a second time. Those email addresses will automatically be there. They get transferred over from uh, the, uh, the first quarter class. The more you use Google Classroom, the more heavily you use it, the more assignments you post in Google Classroom, the more important this strategy of creating a new class for each marketing period will be. At minimum, I would recommend that teachers create a first semester and second semester course. If you use it heavily, I would recommend creating a new class for each quarter or each marking period uh, that you have. Hopefully this has been a helpful tip. If you have a question for me, leave it in the comments. I'd ha be happy to answer them. Do my very best to answer every comment that's posted. Thanks a lot. See you next time.